And we're back from the campus of Tulane University at the BPC's third annual political summit. Joining me now is John Harwood, who is the chief Washington correspondent for CNBC and a political writer for the New York Times. Thanks for joining me. Sure. So we're wrapping up today. Uh, what did what did you learn? Did you see any opportunities for bipartisanship? Well, I think the opportunities for bipartisanship come from the very existence of the Bipartisan Policy Center, from conferences like this, from the fact that some of the people, participants on my panel, new firm, Purple Strategies, it is seeped into the consciousness of much of the political system that the system isn't functioning very effectively. We need to try something different. Um, it doesn't always look like we're making progress toward that goal, but I think it's possible that at some moments like this one, when it seems as if the process has hit bottom, you have it organically reorienting itself because people realize that we've got to do some things differently. So even, for example, in the process of trying to cut the federal budget deficit, looks like they're stalemated, grand bargain didn't work, super committee's having a difficult time. Nevertheless, you do have both parties focused on the same broad gauge goal and working slowly, two steps forward, one step back, to try to solve it, and I think that in itself, if we can focus, allow ourselves to focus on that, represents some positive news. Excellent. Um, one of the questions that you asked on your panel this morning was whether the media has any responsibility for the increase in partisanship. What do you think? I think there's no question about it. Uh, I think the fragmentation of media audiences and what that has produced in terms of the strategies of media organizations to seize and hold their audiences produces a uh, media environment in which news consumers can get their news from people who agree with them. And if you look across the cable and the radio dial, everything from Rush Limbaugh to Keith Olbermann right. uh, on the other side and Fox and MSNBC, ideological programming that reinforces people's preconceptions doesn't necessarily get uh, uh, provide an environment conducive to compromise. Um, that doesn't make it impossible, just makes it harder. Um, and is there any going back from that, or, or should we even want to go back from that? I don't think there is any going back from it. Uh, when I grew up, uh, it was a world in which cable TV was not a dominant force. You had a small number of major television networks, small number of national news magazines, big national newspapers with influence. My dad, who covered politics like I uh, do, had uh, clout in the uh, process that I don't have because uh, there was more of a um, uh, deference to authority and to some degree those voices in the media represented authority. Now there's no deference to anybody. It's a completely democratized, communi uh, democratized communications environment uh, and I think uh, the political parties and government institutions just have to adapt to that. Now, speaking of politics, you recently moderated a GOP presidential primary debate. Um, we've seen these debates getting great numbers in terms of ratings for cable networks. It seems that they've also sort of changed the way that people are running for president in that they don't have the organizations in the early states that we've seen uh, required before. Um, why do you think these debates are having such a dominant impact? Well, it's interesting that last factor you mentioned about the lack of organizations because it's a bit of a chicken and egg conundrum. Uh, one of the reasons that the debates have been so important to so many of the candidates is that other than Mitt Romney, there are very few people in the Republican race, if anyone, with all of the range of attributes that we've associated with viable competitive candidates. That is uh, track record, uh, familiarity, money, and organization. Instead, we see Mitt Romney with those characteristics. But people like Newt Gingrich, who's been out of politics for a long time, Rick Santorum, who lost his last race for the Senate, Michelle Bachman, who uh, emerged from the uh, backbenches of her mm -hmm. caucus, really, as a, uh, somebody who rode in with the Tea Party, um, Ron Paul, who represents the libertarian slice of the Republican Party, but it's a fairly confined slice. All of these people don't have infrastructure. Herman Cain, it, they are one-man band candidates. And debates are perfect for those kind of people because they're all equal on that stage. They may not be equal in the field in Iowa, but they're equal on that debate stage. And therefore, um, uh, those people have adapted to the resources available to them and made an impact. Now, what we're going to find out in the next two months 
is whether, in fact, the traditional political laws of how we sort these things out on the ground in those early states apply, and the people who can put money on television, put organization on the ground, if they're going to be the ones who can thrive, or whether somebody can somehow break through without an organization. We haven't right. seen it before. Right. Now, I can't let you go without asking you. You were the moderator of the debate where Governor Rick Perry famously made his flub. What was it like being on the other side of the table when that happened? It's a crazy moment. Uh, when it first happened, there was a bit of confusion as to whether or not it had turned into a joke and whether uh, Mitt Romney, who was standing uh, a couple of feet away from Perry, had supplied him the answer. I had a very sharp producer in my ear saying, this is not over, don't stop. And so I tried to clarify whether he had answered the question. He said, actually, no, I haven't. I said, well, can you name the agency? And he kept going. And it was one of those moments, unfortunately for him, where he had absolutely driven that car into the wall and he couldn't turn it around. And, uh, uh, and at that point, I just had to get out of the way and let it happen. Right. Well, it was a very nice job journalistically, and thanks for the shout-out to the television producer. As a former television producer myself, we appreciate that. Uh, thank you for joining us for this last of our day uh, bipartisan debrief. Thanks.